today's World Insight, two decades after its return to China, Macau forges ahead to be cheaper, better, and different. Witness Macau in Transition, a World Insight special. The Macau skyline remains the same, but the Macau to thee is underway. On 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China, let me take you around the city. Explore Macau's diversified economy, from financial services to tourism and entrepreneurship. See up close Macau's aspiration, cultural diversity, rising infrastructures, and its vibrant younger generation. Macau in transition, only on World in. Hello, I'm Tian Wei in Macau. Behind me, the skyline of the city, bringing you our special series. Macau in transition on the 20th anniversary of its return to China. This week, we will do the rounds in Macau, explore fascinating facets of this city, and providing you with real insights on its transition. The economy, the education, the entrepreneurship, the infrastructure, and above all, the aspirations to be better and different. First, let's go down Macau's history a bit. The place was a fishing village in its early days. A few hundred years ago, it became a trading port. It went under Portuguese rule as a colony 100 years ago. In 1999, Macau returned to China with the principle of one country, two systems. And this week, it's celebrating the 20th anniversary of that historic moment. Macau lies on the western side of the Pearl River Delta, with Hong Kong to the east. It borders the mainland's Guangdong province to the north and the South China Sea to the east and south. The port city was once an unimpressive and impoverished fishing village, but it has now become a fast-developing international metropolis. It has a quite distinctive culture, featuring blends from the east and west that were formed over a century of colonial history. In the 16th century, a group of Portuguese merchants set foot in Macau, seeking to expand trade relations to the east. They agreed to rent the land from the main government annually, and it essentially became a trading post for the Portuguese. However, 300 years later, Macau fell completely into the hands of the Portuguese Empire as one of its eastern colonies. The European country kept the territory under its rule for over a century. In the late 20th century, China and Portugal conducted four rounds of negotiations over the transfer of Macau. The two countries signed the Joint Declaration in 1987, which set Macau's return to China on December 20th, 1999. Since day one of its return, Macau has enjoyed a large degree of autonomy under the one country, two systems principle. Walking about the streets of Macau, you'll see how the city is immersed in a diverse array of cultures. Everywhere you look, Gothic buildings mingle with modern architecture. Local streets' nameplates are written in both Chinese and Portuguese. Historical memories left an indelible imprint on both the city's culture and landscape. History is always important to learn and fun to explore. About Macau's historic return to China, he is the one to talk to. Minister Antonio Martins de Cruz from Portugal. He was then foreign advisor to the Portuguese Prime Minister when China and Portugal was in intense negotiation for Macau's return to China. He experienced the first hand that historical moment. It's wonderful to see and meet witness of history. Well, <laughs> I, in the last uh, 35 years, I follow very close the relations between uh, China and Portugal. I was very much involved uh, in the negotiations of the future of Macau when China and Portugal negotiate in 86 mm -hmm. the joint declaration. Mm -hmm. And I was here in Beijing for the ceremony of the signature in April 87. Mm -hmm. And I still remember I was with the Prime Minister of Portugal in the long meeting, two hours, with Mr. Deng Xiaoping. What was it like when you, together with the Premier of Portugal, meeting him? 
Oh, he, he was fantastic. He was telling us uh, the opening of China at that time to the foreign markets in the financial aspects, in the trade, the expected development of China. And I believe that uh, your development is even bigger of the vision of Mr. Deng Xiaoping 35 years ago mm. because it's fantastic how China changed in the last years. Yeah. And we are very happy in Portugal because we are the oldest European friend of China. Mm. And this is, uh, uh, we are very proud of our relations with China since the 16th century. What was the most difficult part of the negotiation? Was the timing. The most <laughs> difficult part was the timing. Explain, please. It was the timing because uh, we had a short period, a few months only, to negotiate. But thanks God, was a very successful negotiation. You were working as a young consultant for the Prime Minister yeah, that's and right. the Portuguese I was government the, at I that was time. the Foreign Affairs Advisor of the Prime Minister. Exactly. At that so, time. so tell me more about the inside stories. Well, several members of the Chinese government visit Lisbon at that time and the mm. Portuguese came to, to Beijing and we managed to in parallel negotiate several things. For instance, the transitional period of uh, 10 years, yes. the land system, uh, the financial system, which banks from Portugal and for China could add uh, the power to print money for Macau, for the Pataka who exists today. So we split in several points the negotiations and we deal it in parallel system. Very it, efficient. It was, as far as I was told by my Chinese friends, was easier for the Chinese part to negotiate with Portugal than to negotiate with the United Kingdom. <laughs> That's for sure, that's for sure. But which part do you think you remember the most among all the issues that you need to have a common line and a common ground? Well, you just mentioned in the beginning of our conversation uh, the probably a more difficult part was to respect the one country, two systems in economic issues. Mm. I'm going to give you an example. Yes, please. The land, Macau is very small territory. It's a small territory, 20, 20 square kilometers, yes. uh, a peninsula and two islands. Land is very expensive in, in, in Macau. So we need to find solutions with our Chinese friends how to deal with uh, problems of the land during the transitional period mm. in order to allow the new administration in Macau to control the situation after 99. And this, we create a special working group on lands, yes. who work very well during all the, the nine years of the transitional period and was a successful one. But at the beginning, it was necessary to adjust positions on the, on the Chinese ideology and with the capitalistic rules of Macau before. <laughs> Can you be more specific? It sounds very interesting to me. It was, we need to solve the questions of the free market on land on one side and the other side administrative solutions to preserve the lands that the new Macau administration would need yeah. after the, 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 yes. the end over, especially the reclaimed land. Yes. Uh, they, they have done a wonderful job in, in Macau recently, and, uh, and this was the result of these successful negotiations between China and Portugal. Mm. At the time when you were meeting with Deng Xiaoping, it was after the successful resolve of the Hong Kong issue. That's right. What was it like for Portugal at that time to look at how Hong Kong was resolved between China and Britain and how much 
aspiration did it provide your side with the solutions about Macau? Of course, the, the joint declaration that China signed with the UK, United Kingdom, was some kind of reference for our uh, diplomatic talks with China. But I believe that uh, thanks to the wisdom of the Chinese government and to the work of the Portuguese government, we have a better agreement from Macau than the agreement for Hong Kong. What do you mean? For instance, the development of Macau is a ref uh, reflects this agreement. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, there is a lot of inhabitants of Macau who can use Portuguese passports, for instance, and the Chinese government allowed them, and everybody is very happy. And the political and social and economic life of Macau is much more uh, quiet than Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, especially in our days, uh, you can see that Macau is an example of development and of political and social stability. Mm. Mr. Minister, many have been asking questions and curious about one country, two systems. This very special arrangement from the very beginning, decades ago. Now, of course, with all the latest development, people are even more curious about exactly what they should mean and what they will mean for the future. What do you think? I believe that it was a good principle, I believe, established for Mr. Deng Xiaoping at, at this time, and this was uh, essential for the negotiations with the British and with the Portuguese about Hong Kong and then Macau. And I believe it's, it's a very successful formula because from the uh, 80s until today, uh, it will apply in those, these two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. And uh, I think this could be an excellent example for uh, other Chinese people mm -hmm. who look at the mainland with... Uh, this uh, trust that these uh, principles of yeah. one country, two systems applied both in Hong Kong and Macau. After its historic return to China, Macau has faced the challenges and opportunities. Its gaming industry is seven times larger than that of Las Vegas, but its economy needs new momentum and diversification. On that, the former negotiator and a lifelong fan of Macau had this to say. If you look at the development of Macau over the past 20 and 30 years, particularly with the recent initiatives of Belt and Road yes. Initiative of Hong Kong, Macau, and Guangdong, yes. how do you see all of these mechanisms is giving Macau opportunities? And as a result also, how many challenges um, Macau needs to overcome in order to take great advantage of these initiatives? This new Chinese initiative, the Great Bay Area, including uh, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, Zhuhai, and Guangdong, yeah. who are responsible by about 30% uh, of Chinese exports, it's very important in economic and financial questions uh, and also in tourism uh, aspects. It's very important. This is a big challenge for Macau because Macau is very small. Mm. It's surrounded by big areas like Tsuhai, Shenzhen, yes. Hong Kong, and especially, of course, uh, Guangdong. But I believe that Macau can solve the questions because Macau is very much turned to the tourism, tourism activities. Now they are more and more enter in what we call the Congress tourism, organization of Congress and international meetings. Yes. It's very successful in Macau, the Macau Forum, that means the, a platform for the economic relations between China and the Portuguese speaking countries in the world. 
the nine countries in four continents who speak Portuguese and they had this platform, the Macau Forum, which is very important also for the relations between China and these nine countries in Latin America, mm -hmm. Africa, Europe and even Asia with East Timor. And uh, China is profiting a lot from this platform. Macau is, will be always a bridge between China and Portugal, mm -hmm. always. For the strong presence of the Portuguese companies in Macau yes. and the fact that uh, in, the, in a cultural way for us, Macau is the Portuguese door to China. I also want to ask a question regarding the financial cooperation. How do you see the nature of this kind of cooperation? Because Macau, when people think about it, financial sector very important given the fact it is a Congress uh, so-called industry and given the fact of history of Macau's economic development. What do you make of that, Mr. Minister? I think uh, Macau could create more uh, capabilities to even develop more the financial possibilities. Of course, the Chinese uh, in financial institutions like the Bank of China are already, have already banks in Portugal and they operate a lot. We have already four Chinese banks in Portugal, mm. which is very important. But uh, we are creating more and more direct uh, uh, financial links mm -hmm. between China and Portugal. As you probably know, Portugal was the first European country who, who issue uh, a public debt in renminbis, what we call the PEMBA, uh, PANDA operation, and we are very happy with this, and we hope to repeat it. And uh, this was organized by the Bank of China in Portugal. Before you go, I would love to ask one qu question. Yes. As a witness to history back in the 1980s, as someone who participated in the overall process of Macau's return to China, and also as a witness later of Macau's development, and certainly the changes we are seeing today in our world, including this region. What do you make of this example of Macau worked out so far? What do you think will be the biggest takeaway about this? Well, I think the, the, the example of, of progress, development and the stability of Macau could be an example for other regions. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, neighbors must look to this situation with a positive one and contribute to development, to the happiness of the people and especially this could be important for China because China can present always Macau as a successful example. Mm. What do you make of the latest situation in Hong Kong, if I could ask you, just as an observer? I have been several times in Hong Kong. Uh, as an observer, we don't understand. I, I, I believe that the population of Hong Kong is divided. Uh, a minority who is creating a lot of problems. Probably they don't realize that they are creating problems for the future devel economic development and financial development of Hong Kong. Um, probably uh, these negative consequences will turn against the people who are doing these kind of things, which what I hope is that uh, they could, uh, the Hong Kong people, quickly find a solution uh, and find a solution to contribute to the stability and to the continuity of, of Hong Kong. And the inhabitants of Hong Kong, they must understand, as I believe that the inhabitants of Macau, they understand, that the situation in Hong Kong is a result of in international negotiations between China and UK. And the joint declaration must be respected because it's an international treaty, must be respected. 
there, there is a segment of the population of Hong Kong for political reasons, for economic reasons, I don't know, I'm not an expert, who seem, do not understand that the joint declaration must be respected. Mm. And the, in this case, Macau is a very good example. Mr. Minister, thank you so much for sharing your stories as a history witness. Thank you very much. thank you for your insights. What a thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Macau in Transition on World Insight. Coming up, Macau's diversifying economy and breakout creative industry. My exclusive interview with one of the most popular pop music group slash entrepreneurs from the place. This is Macau in Transition, a World Inside special on the 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. I'm Tian Wei. I'm coming to you with Macau's skyline right behind me. 20 years is a short time in history, but for the people living it, it is much more than number. It's a big part of their lives. That's what MFM told me when I talked to this pop music group from Macau in their small studio in the local creative industry hub. Welcome and let's meet MFM from Macau. Hi. Hi, we are MFM. I'm Hyper. I'm Josie. I'm AJ. Wow, good to see you guys. This is the rising star of Macau. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seven years already, right? Yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> seven, it's seven years each. each. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Does it each already? Uh, each Every time to time. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Let me hear more about that. <laughs> okay. So what about that, AJ? How did you guys get uh, we, together? We actually, I, I was friends with uh, Hyper, yeah. and I knew him from, for a long time, and I was studying in Australia at the time. Okay. And then uh, Josie, when I came back to work, Josie was one of my colleagues from the other team. Oh. So uh, I didn't know she was singing, uh, but, but then one, one day I saw her on the TV. She was receiving an award from a local TV, uh, TV channel. With heavy makeup. With heavy makeup. <laughs> <laughs> totally different nice from what she used to look at, like, at you work. You could recognize. That's a miracle. I couldn't recognize <laughs> he almost. Doubt. Then he, he, he um, messaged me, is it you on TV? Because you the name different. is different. Oh, and I the see. name also different. Yeah, I see. She called Josie in work and uh, in the TV. Yeah. But then how did you join Jia Hao? He introduced us all together. All together. Yeah. It's because I, I, I learned that Josie, like she also liked to sing. Yeah. So I, I thought maybe I could introduce her to, to Hyper because mm -hmm. uh, when I knew that she was singing, she told me about all her bad experiences or the oh. lack of uh, opportunities to, <laughs> to, 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 to perform okay. in the cow. So like Hyper as one of our older brothers, I oh, thought really? maybe he Hyper could bring us a little, bit of, a little bit of chances. Yeah. So. Uh, I always wanted to, to introduce Josie to, to, to Hyper. Yeah. And but then he reject me twice. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, it's quite as I can tell. There's a lot of itches going on <laughs> from the very beginning. But you guys put out a lot of wonderful songs. Recently, Thank you. Thank you. Perfect, for example, is Thank one you. of those very rhythmic songs. Thank and you also got uh, another um, very slow but very the emotional. Lonely song. Yes, exactly. Uh, how did them happen? Who wrote them? And how did you guys work on them? Well, the two songs that you just mentioned, it was composed by AJ. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then the lyrics were done by Hyper. What's your job? Uh, singing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm less productive as well. <laughs> Maybe one or two songs a year. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Oh, okay, all right. You know, our audience really know about this. The reason why it's called MFM is about male, female, female. male. male. Yeah. Yes. So I think uh, Josie's role is very important to manage these guys to make them work hard. You are very right. There we go. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> And another meaning of our name is because. Um, the International Airport of Macau is yeah. also called MFM, MFM. Oh. the short form. Yeah. So uh, we want uh, we want to bring our music to a broader audience to that's bring actually, international. That's actually a question I really want to ask ah. you because the market here, the size, 
to tell the truth, is limited here in Macau. Very small, yeah. How would you be able to, I mean, no, you know, pop songs, pop music, you need a huge market to prosper. So how did you guys try to manage go beyond Macau, but also, also thrive in Macau? Josie? Well, um, I think, well, Hyper is a very experienced singer in Macau. Awesome, <laughs> you. And he is very hardworking. Thank when, uh, before he met us, he worked himself. He, he's like a one-man band. Mm. Um, when he wrote songs, he would like to, um, uh, uh, to promote the songs in a better way. Because in Macau, um, we used to have very limited channel to promote our songs, only radio or maybe put it on, online. We had limited access to digital media, digital platform, and then uh, he knew nothing about it too, when, uh, like 10 years ago. But he was very um, brave to like cold call or email mm -hmm. to like those big brand and then try to bring our music to those channels. I heard about that story. <laughs> yes, because Macau is so small, they also even don't know how oh, you got music, you got Macau you got singer. singer. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I, I sent an uh, email to Apple and uh, just like uh, go and back, go and back, 200 emails. Oh my God, as they say, even the drop of water will eventually go through the stone. That's yes. exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. But it? AJ helped a lot. You know, uh, like Hyper started it, like with the... the a the movement. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the hopes of getting the, the, the songs in all these like amazing platforms that we have available for everyone. But then I think um, the, main, the main thing for us is really to establish a memory in all the audiences that yeah. listen to our songs. And how we differentiate ourselves, I think, would be uh, we try to bring out our culture. Mm. Um, like, ev like people that have come to Macau, they might be able to, to understand more like our sort of traditions and music. We right. have Portuguese culture, we have Chinese culture, we mm. have a mix of both. So uh, that's what we try to do in our music, sometimes to bring our own stories, uh, sometimes to bring our own backgrounds, mm. uh, like music styles and yeah. uh, Portuguese style and everything. So Sounds perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's the song, Good isn't it? Yes. That's perfect. Can you guys sing one or two arias for our audience? Okay, the, sure. the chorus, maybe. Uh. You make me perfect. You make me perfect. I love you more than I can say. You just the world that just should change. You guys, besides you, you're a professional artist, but you are not just singing, you are yeah. doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And for the two of you, you are professionals, actually. <laughs> you work in a, a hotel, huge yes. shopping mall and hotel. So how would you be able to get your time together and travel on tours, work on music? Yeah. A lot of energy needs to put into there. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we work at the hotel like for eight hours daily, but uh, maybe when we need to meet each other, when we need to have some discussion or go shopping for like the the, the performing um, costume. The we make use of our lunch time. We work at a shopping <laughs> mall, so this is very, very good. Uh, we can, we can uh, shop those costumes during lunch time, <laughs> or we um, make use of our lunch time to have meeting. Mm. Yeah. Just an, an example, this afternoon actually, one of the media outlets called us and asked us to take photos of travel spots in Macau. Mm -hmm. And I was with her, so we, w we just ran out of our hotel no. and we took a photo and then we sent over. <laughs> yeah, <our hotel laughs> is one of the, the, the most uh, iconic, uh, iconic yeah. attractions, yeah. so it's very convenient. But, but it's but not easy because you have to convince your colleagues that you're working hard, yes. yeah. while at the same time you have a different life, you know, a very different life compared to theirs. I, I think it's very lucky of us to have understanding bosses, understanding colleagues, they are very supportive. They are um, watching, I know they are watching. They are <laughs> <very laughs> Say better words about them. They, no, they are very good. Yeah. We've always, like, we've been very thankful of yeah. every opportunity and everything. Because every this is, you are representing Macau in a way. And also I think it's about the work in uh, the company is very hard and they do all their things very well, so their boss lets <laughs> them to... Mm. So you first have to accomplish your own tasks. Yes, right. yes, yes. And that's when they can give you the chance to go yeah, out to and go do out your... Yes. And, and you are the pride of them as well. Thank you. And <laughs> you are the pride of Macau because you sing in this very important song, you know, celebrating the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. of Return of Macau to China. Yeah. You yes. sing that song, what's that called? Sure. Uh, Lian 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 unified as one, unified as one, one family, yes, right? Yes. Lin 
，心中信念一样。Yes, um, I remember 20 years ago um, at the big show celebrating the the handover to China.、Mm -hmm. I was also one of the performer,、wow. but not a singer, not a singer, because there was a big show with a thousand、uh, local residents. I was one of the the dancer. What did you dance at that time? I was like a lotus. Oh, the seed of the lotus. And you are a flower right <laughs> now. <laughs> I feel very、um, honored that I can participate in both celebrations.、Yeah. I remember a song that、um, uh, is about the handover to、uh, China. It's、yeah. called the the Song of the Seven Sons. Okay, Chi Chi Chi. Okay, got it. It's a beautiful song. Yeah. 你可知马卡？不是我真心，我离开你太久了，母亲。好好听，好听，好听。呃 ，When I was ten, I knew nothing about the handover. Like, what does that mean? I I know nothing. And but uh, but I I already um, I was very passionate in singing already. I dreamed about uh being a a singer. Yeah. But um, I knew that it was difficult because Macau was a small market. No, mo no previous successful example um、uh, ahead. So I it was only a dream. But、uh, not until I graduated from high school, I started to see. More Macau singer go out of Macau.、Oh. Yeah, then I I I start thinking, oh, that can be possible.、Mm. Let's wait till I graduate from college and see when I come back to Macau what will happen. But I think Macau government help a lot because they got some policy to、uh, help local artists. Subsidies. Yes. Yes. How does the subsidy work? Oh, you have to submit proposals. Yeah. And then you have to go for several interview rounds. Um, there are different subsidies, in pl、uh, like different plans、yes. uh, in different departments right now, and it's not only to music; it's all also to all artistic fields like、mm. theater, design, Movie. movies, everything.、Mm. So I think what what Macau is trying to do is to differentiate itself not as a, a casino, pure casino、mm -hmm. city, but also as a, a multi. Purpose or multi-environment、mm -hmm. uh, city,、mm -hmm. uh, food even right now. So it's a very good idea, I think, and it gave a lot of opportunities for us. I think, I think it's important in a way because、yeah. when the artists start up, it's very difficult, right? Yes.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, any society should respect artists. Thank you. Thank you. It's true. It's、Thank、true.、You. Very important. Another thing, do you interact with artists and talents from the mainland, from Hong Kong, other places as well? Uh, yes,、uh, maybe from Hong Kong、uh, is more frequent because it's nearby, and then sometimes we work in Hong Kong. Yeah,、uh, we perform at a venue with other Hong Kong celebrities,、mm -hmm. especially、um, AJ and I. We have a common、um, idol, is Joey Yong from Hong Kong.、Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> recently, we had show、uh, at Macau all、uh, together, and I got to see her in person and、oh, got、nice. to take a picture with her, and because we had some、uh, interaction on social media before, so. That was my first time to see her in person, and I was like super touched, exciting, excited, starstruck. Yes.、Yeah. Before we go, I really want to know how you guys are planning your future as an artist.、Um, we hope to go further. Like、uh, the first step, we we went to Hong Kong、yeah. two two three years ago, and then、uh, this year we step into Taiwan, Taiwan and also the Greater Bay Area, and hopefully next year we can go to. More、um, places, region in China. Also,、yeah. we want to explore our China market because it's very big, and hopefully, MFM will come up top of their mind if someone uh, uh, say Macau singers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what about for you, AJ?、Um, I think like there are still very, very vast opportunities around the world, and we're really trying to. Expand ourselves and to like in order to do that, I think we need to keep up with ourselves, like trainings, 
like dancing, saying. <laughs> That's <laughs> difficult, isn't it? Yes. That's the most difficult part. It's a big uh, challenge. I know yeah. it's a big challenge for all of you. Yes. yes. To begin really? with. We all had a, a, a little bit of transformation <laughs> we had. It's amazing, you know, how these guys, these girls are managing themselves, you know. 200 pounds, I heard. 216 pounds, actually. Oh, my God. Yes, 98 kil Earlier. kilos. Early. And when now I was in, you. Uh, still, still heavy, not but, the best shape, but not but the best shape not right now. It goes like a roller coaster, yeah. but it's okay now. But you have to challenge yourself <laughs> yes. all the time. I know the difficulty of that, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. And Josie, what about for you? Also, same thing, huh? Yes, I used to be a fat girl, like 150 pounds. Yeah. Look at her now. No, I'm trying to hide my, <laughs> <laughs> my fat legs. <laughs> <laughs> and Jia Hao, also. I was so skinny before, 60 kilograms. And now 77. Yeah. Congrats. Oh, wow, you guys, some muscle. you guys look great and you Thank seem you. beautifully. Thank you. And I think you are the sunshine. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All you. the best. I think you are performing. You're performing on the eve of the 20th anniversary, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Wei. All right. Watching Macau in Transition, the first episode of a World Inside special celebrating 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. Before I go, I will leave you today with this food for thought. Why the odds are stacked in favor of Macau's successful transition. I mean, the former Portuguese colony of Macau, 20 years ago, it returned to China has become a special administrative region. Only 60 kilometers west of Hong Kong, for a long time, Macau was easily overlooked by most of the world and only well known for its gaming industry. But recently, change and transformation is on the minds of many. It's not that Macau's economy slowed down, not at all. It has developed rapidly over the past 20 years. Its gaming industry revenue is seven times that of Las Vegas. Its per capita GDP even also ranks among the highest in Asia and the world. But people want a better future for Macau, one with more potential and versatility. During my recent visit to Macau, the people we talked to, government officials, business leaders, or university students, or any locals on the street, will tell you Macau wants to diversify its economy and take advantage of opportunities. So what are these opportunities? The future focus will be on tourism and finance. Looking at the city's background as a gateway between east and west, gives Macau a unique advantage to develop tourism. In fact, it is already on its way, with the mainland economy booming and also the mainland tourists making up the majority of tourists traveling here. Macau is also working to develop more financial infrastructure, so it could connect the Portuguese-speaking economies with China and Asia. At the same time, policies will integrate Macau with mainland cities in the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area, by the way, is the region around the Pearl River Delta that also includes Hong Kong and Guangdong Province. In addition, with more land comes more space for development. Macau has been allocated with more land in Hengqin thanks to the favorable policies from Beijing's central government. As a result, education, healthcare, entrepreneurship all become possible. Businesses that focus on gaming industry now have more space to diversify their future too. With a population of 600,000, Macau is small, but great things come in small packages. It has clear goals and a shared vision. That is, a future is only guaranteed through hard work and transformation. I'm Tian Wei, and the Macau Special Administrative Region.